Hello guys! Today we will go through the process of unbreaking my Kindle Paperwhite 2, which is the 6th generation of Kindle. I will show you how to connect serial interface, how to properly flash it, how to jailbreak it, and how to apply custom screensavers hack. Before we will come to the main point, first I would like to share some history behind it and why I decided to open it instead of sending it back to Amazon. I got this Kindle as a gift from my brother and when I first powered it on and set it up, it was working just fine. Uh, I used it for about 20 minutes, configured Wi-Fi and then left alone. Next day when I got back to it, it was completely discharged. Ok, not a problem, I thought. I connected it to the charger and waited to boot. You can imagine my disappointment and also my brothers who was standing next to me when we discovered that uh, it stuck in a boot loop. Of course, I started googling, trying to reset it somehow by holding power button down from 15 to 40 seconds, but nothing helped. Ok then, I know it is possible to unbreak the unit, but I was not planning to waste my time for it. So I decided to contact Amazon. I read multiple feedbacks that Amazon is not making any problems with replacing faulty Kindles. So I just uh, thought that they replaced mine too. I decided to call Amazon UK support hotline. This is the closest to me. After some verification questions and going through the mandatory procedure, guess what, hold power button for 40 seconds. When nothing helped and uh, the discussion came to the replace unit topic, the lady said, Oh, you know what, your Amazon account is registered in the US. You need to call to Amazon US, only them can help you. Ok then, calling to US support. Again questions, again holding button for 40 seconds, which does not help. Now the technician came up with another idea. Your Kindle device was bought in Japan, you need to call to Amazon Japan support. No, no, I said, uh, my Kindle was bought in the European Union, why should I call Japan? Well, maybe it was bought in the European Union, but because it was sold in a retail store, probably it was imported from Japan. I asked, does they speak English? Hmm. The reply was no, I doubt. Ok, after such interaction with Amazon, where I was being ping-ponged uh, to different units and didn't get any real help, I decided not to waste any more time and to fix my Kindle by myself. I was sure it was possible. What is my working plan? So my plan was simple. I needed to disassemble the device, uh, connect the serial interface, understand what was the root cause of the problem. Actually this step is not necessary, but I just decided to do it for my own curiosity. The next step is to flash it obviously, maybe to jailbreak it at the same step uh, and finally assemble it. So let's start with disassembling. Disassembling Paperweight 2 is actually a very easy task, although you need to be very careful to not to scratch the plastics. Here is how I did it. I used a needle to initially pry open the front frame. Later I used a piece of plastic card uh, to finally detach the frame. Once the frame was detached, uh, for the steps are dead easy as uh, all the screws are easily accessible. Once I've got access to the main board, it is time to connect serial interface. There are many USB to serial converters on the market, like uh, PL2303, but uh, it is important to use proper TTL voltage for the serial signal. Kindle uses 1.8V TTL signal, uh, so anything higher than that may burn it. Most popular serial to USB adapters are using 5V or 3.3V. In my case, I used adapter based on chip mark CP2104, uh, which allows to control TTL level by applying required voltage to pin number 5. Uh, this is so called VIO pin, voltage input output pin. 
This chip allows to set any voltage between 1.8 and 5 volts. The adapter that I own didn't have the external connector for the I.O. pin, so I had to modify the board a little. We will not go through the process here, because this is not the main point. Here is just the final result. And this is additional pin I made, which is connected to the pin number 5 of the chip. Now by applying 1.8 volts to this pin, uh, I will have 1.8 volts TTL level. Next question is where to find reliable 1.8 reference volts. I searched Kindle mainboard assuming that if it has 1.8 TTL signal, there should be somewhere constant 1.8 volts available there, but I didn't manage to find it. And this is actually not a problem. I used a simple voltage uh, divider based on 25 kilo ohms potentiometer to obtain 1.8 volts. One of each side is connected to the ground, another side is connected to a 3.3 volt source. And on the middle pin uh, of the potentiometer we can read the voltage. Now adjusting the potentiometer I can obtain any voltage in between. Of course such divider cannot be used as power source for any de uh, device, but can be perfectly used as reference voltage. This is exactly what I needed. Ok, the adapter is configured, uh, it is time to solder it to the Kindle serial interface. The pins of the serial connector can be easily found here. Soldering the cables and we are almost ready to do the first connectivity test. The only thing we are missing is the terminal program. To interact with serial interface I'm using Minicom program, but you can use any serial terminal you like. Important thing is that uh, serial port parameters need to be properly configured as displayed here. In my case everything worked immediately after first connection and I could see system messages in the serial terminal while Kindle was booting. Let's have a look at the messages I saw. Actually, last two error messages tell us everything. E-Ink driver cannot set proper VCOM voltage and as a result driver is unloaded, the system hangs and reboots. This could happen due to a bug in the driver or problem with the chip called MAX77696. This chip is actually responsible for E-Ink display power management. After finishing this video I managed to overcome this problem by fixing the code of the driver and recompiling the model for a newer firmware. But this is a topic for a separate video. Right now let's simply focus on flashing Kindle with older firmware that was working properly. The next part of this tutorial will present multiple links. All of them will be listed in the film description so you can just scroll down and search for them here. Now back to the flashing. Excellent step-by-step -step guide of how to reflash your Kindle Paperwhite 2 is available here. I followed this guide, however, there are minor errors in this guide and some steps are overcomplicated in my opinion. I used version 5.4 for ROM image uh, downloaded from this link. This image is already jailbroken, uh, so I will not need to perform any additional steps apart from flashing this image to my Paperwhite and I will immediately have jailbroken Kindle Paperwhite. Anyway, here is how I did it. First, uh, while Kindle is booting, press enter multiple times until boot sequence is interrupted. Of course you need to do it in a serial terminal. It is only possible uh, on the very early stage of the booting. If you succeed, you should see U-boot command line prompt like this. Next, write commands Beast Fast Boot and press Enter. The device will enter fast boot mode. Next steps should be done in the command line on your PC while Kindle is in fast boot mode. I'm using Linux, but command on Windows and Mac will be similar. Now we need to flash four different images, or if you prefer files, to your Kindle. These are the agnostic kernel image, the agnostic image itself, system kernel image and of course the main system image. All except system image could be flashed with fastboot. The last one and the most important system image could not be flashed with fastboot, probably because it is too big, but I'll cover it later. To flash the files we need to issue the following commands. While flashing, uh, if everything goes fine, 
You can observe messages both on your PC console and on your Kindle device, serial console. Once all images are flashed, we need to switch Kindle to diagnostic mode. To do this, we need to issue the following commands. Fastboot set bar boot mode diag. Uh, this will put uh, Kindle into the diagnostic mode uh, the next time we boot. So, the next step is to add the diagnostic mode. To do this, simply type fastboot reboot. Kindle will reboot into diagnostic mode. While in diagnostic mode, press U to enter USB mode. Now, while in USB mode, connect your Kindle to your PC with the USB cable. Mine is already connected. Computer will detect new USB drive, which we need to mount and copy system partition image to. Ok, the image is copied. Now we need to unmount USB drive and access Kindle operating system command line. For this, while in diagnostic mode, press D to select Exit, Reboot or Disable Diag option. Then press L uh, to select Exit to Login Prompt. Now Kindle should go into Standard Linux Login Prompt. I am logging as root user. The default password uh, for the image that I am using is Mario. The next step is to flash system partition, as Fastboot is not able to do it. Quiet file is already copied to Kindle internal drive in the previous step. The only thing we need to do is to flash it uh, to ROM partition. I'm doing it using standard Linux DB tool. The command line is the following. Once the system image is flashed, for the last time, I am entering fastboot mode to disable diagnostic mode and reboot Kindle. And voila, my Kindle is alive again. Oh, it's entered USB mode, because USB cable is still plugged in. Detaching USB cable and the dashboard is here. Now the most interesting part. At the beginning, I was not interested in jailbroken Kindle. The main reason people do it is to have custom screen savers, which is not benefit to me. So, after fixing my Kindle, I downloaded official firmware from Amazon. Version 5.8.7 was the latest available at the moment. Uh, here's the link. And I flashed it using standard procedure. So, copied the file to the USB drive and uh, flashed uh, through settings update menu. Uh, I was deeply surprised to see that immediately after upgrade, during first boot, my Kindle fall back into boot loop. So, it is a software bug, and it is not a problem uh, with drained battery I thought at the beginning. I couldn't believe it, so I reverted to 5.4 and updated again to 5.8.7. Again, boot loop. This is when I decided to stay with the jailbroken 5.4 firmware. Uh, the only thing I needed to do is to prevent it from over-the-air uh, automatic upgrades. Otherwise, immediately after connecting my Kindle to Wi-Fi, it will upgrade my Kindle automatically uh, to the latest firmware and I can expect boot loop again. Luckily, there are ways to disable it. There is a hack called Backdoor Lock uh, that serves this purpose. All instructions on how to apply it are provided on this forum. Actually, it is dead easy. Copy zip file, run update from setting menu and that's all. Once this was installed, I also installed Hacked for custom screensavers. Well, why not? One important note here. To upload custom screensavers, they need to have 768 per 1024 pixels resolution and need to be in PNG format. Otherwise, this hack will simply remove the file from the folder which uh, it does not understand. Great, everything is done. Now I can close the case and finally use my brand new Kindle. 
Thanks Amazon for the great support. I had to do everything myself. If you want to see more do-it-yourself or fix-it-yourself tutorials like this, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time!